Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you very much, Father Noel, for inviting me to participate in this uh, liturgical celebration uh, of witness to the Lord and inviting me to do the exegesis on today's readings. We start off with uh, Zachariah 9 9. Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Uh, now, as you all know, Zachariah is a minor prophet. Uh, he lived during the time of the exile. He's what you call an exilic minor uh, prophet uh, who lived during the time of the exile, which is 538 BC. Uh, you know, uh, Jerusalem fell uh, to the Babylonians in 587. And uh, during uh, that exile period, which was a very difficult period, and that was a time when the Jewish people lost all hope and were depressed, and they were questioning their faith in God. Why did uh, Yahweh did this to us? We are ashamed. Uh, we were a sovereign nation. Now we are slaves, and so on and so forth. So Zachariah is one of those prophets who gave hope and consolation to the people in exile. And today's reading uh, is a very familiar passage for you because we celebrate this event in uh, Palm Sunday when we celebrate the joyful and victorious entry of Jesus into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. And in fact, Matthew and Luke, uh, Matthew and John uh, quote this passage in the gospel readings. So this Xavier, the King Messiah that is coming, is not a soldier Messiah as in the past, in Solomon and in David and Saul, but this is a Messiah, Messiah who is very humble and lowly, and a common person who is coming seated on a colt or a donkey. Now, as you know, the donkeys were used by the common people. The soldiers and emperors and generals used the horses. And in fact, later on in this uh, passage, you will see that this, messa uh, this messiah <coughs> is asking you to put away all the armaments and uh, instruments of war, bows and arrows and things like that. So uh, for the first time, you have uh, a messiah that is a humble a man of the people, almost like a shepherd and not a conqueror, not a soldier. So Zacharias reading will come to light when we go to the gospel readings and also when we go to talk about uh, the epistle of St. Paul, which is a very interesting uh, document. As you know, St. Paul was a Pharisee and he was a very learned Pharisee, and in his first life as Saul, he persecuted the Christians, and he was so orthodox minded that he wanted to eliminate Christianity because it was considered heretical to the orthodox Jewish people. After his conversion, he came uh, he did a Copernican revolution in his life. He did a complete U-turn. He dejected the Pharisee, uh, the Orthodox Jewish uh, theology and the doctrine and way of life. And the Jews believed by observing the Torah to the letter, observing every law in its nuances, and they will attain intimacy with God or salvation or redemption. 
which was impossible task because there were million laws and sub laws and sub context into the Torah. So there was no way that one could attain redemption through Torah. And it was impossible. It was a huge burden on the people. And the Pharisees, the doctors of the law <clears throat> and the religious uh, authorities kept piling up more and more and more and they had no care for the people. People were looking for consolation and rest and thirsting for the intimacy of God. But so Paul, when he got converted, he came and wrote this great book of the Romans, the epistle or letters to the Romans, where he exposes his theology, his new theology of redemption through faith in Christ. In fact, the Protestant movement's fundamental basis was this theory. Faith redeems you. Redemption by faith alone. So no amount of observing the laws, no amount of doing good work was going to not going to give you salvation. So Paul's text here very clearly shows that there are two styles of life given to us. One is the life of sin, death which is called the Kata Sarka. And the life of the spirit, which is called the Kata Numa. So it's a contrasting style, it's a contrasting theory that he exposes that if you believe that you are going to observe the law and get redemption, you are actually in the flesh and you are not going to get redemption, that is death, that is destruction. But if you believe in the merciful God, that he will forgive you, that he will console you, that through faith in Jesus Christ, that you will and you will get your redemption. So Paul's fundamental thesis is that redemption is through faith in Christ. And this is going to be further developed in today's gospel, which is a very interesting gospel passage. This gospel passage today is very controversial actually. A lot of scripture scholars like Julius uh, Wellhausen and Julius Weiss and a few others, uh, Hanak, they have disagreed vehemently on various aspects of this passage. Initially, they disagreed that this is not a coherent passage, but it's an interpolation of many traditions and passages from others, especially because of the prayer of Jesus. They thought this was a Jonine from St. John's Gospel or Jonine influence in this passage. But towards the end, they all agreed that this is a one perfect single passage unit and that it does show coherence in its entirety. This uh, whole passage is divided into three categories. Okay, uh, the first is 
Jesus thanks the Father for revealing these mysteries and the salvation of God, the message of God to the ordinary people. To the ordinary people, Anavim Yahweh, the poor of Yahweh. Then the second thing, uh, he he invites he invites everybody to accept the yoke that he is offering. Now there's a contrast between the yoke that he is offering and the yoke that the Pharisees have been offering to the people. The yoke that Jesus is offering is the love of God, the forgiveness of God, the merciful love of God, and which is sweet and which is easy to carry. And in some sections in Luke's Gospel, uh, there's a controversial passage where uh, Luke talks about the knowledge that he has of God is as opposed to the knowledge that uh, the Pharisees and the doctors of the law were giving. Jesus says, my knowledge of God, my knowledge of salvation is directly from my relationship with the Father. He revealed himself to me, and nobody knows the Father except the Son. So his knowledge of God is almost a moral knowledge, an intimate father-son relationship knowledge. It is not like from some theologic professor or moral theologian uh, who has been learning from some other theologian, from other teachers, handed down from generations, like in the tradition of the Torah. So he says, come to me. I will give you refreshment because my yoke, which is the yoke of salvation through faith in Jesus Christ and in the Father. So this is a beautiful passage and it all blends into one where Jesus uh, confirms what Paul is saying is in apostle uh, in his epistle that salvation is not by obeying a whole heap of laws, but by deep faith in Jesus Christ and in God and believing in his merciful love. Thank you very much. I wish you all the very best. God bless you.